uh, talking about preventing and reversing chronic diseases, uh, which is really amazing. Um, so what can you tell us about the patients that you've worked with and why is a whole food plant-based diet so effective? Okay, so I first want to mention that it, <clears throat> it really is effective to the point that if someone is watching this and they want to switch to eating this way and they're taking medications that can lower blood sugar or that can lower blood pressure, that they will need to uh, be monitoring those and be in contact with their doctor or whoever the provider is that prescribed those because the doses of those may need to decrease. And especially for medications that lower blood sugar, eating this way can make your body lower its own blood sugar, which is great, even when you're eating carbohydrate, <clears throat> which is what, again, sort of throws most people off. But because we're fixing the underlying problem, which I'll talk about in a second, um, the very first thing we do is warn our patients that eating this way can be incredibly effective. So you need to make sure that you are staying on top of monitoring your blood sugar or your blood pressure if those are things you take medication for and talking to your doctor if those start to get low at all. Um, and just before you go into that, could you tell us um, what are the signs, if somebody is considering it, what are the signs uh, to look out for for low blood pressure and low blood sugar? Okay, so some of them actually overlap a bit. Okay. Um, for low blood sugar, there'll be things like they'll suddenly get sweaty and mm -hmm. nauseous and feel lightheaded or dizzy. I mean, they can be a little different for everyone, but sort of the room gets spinny, you feel like you might throw up. Um, that's a time where if you're on a blood sugar lowering medication, particularly something like insulin, but a number of them can do it to, again, there's some resources on this online. There's a rule of 15 that you're going to eat, you know, 15 grams of carbohydrate. That's about, you know, half a cup of fruit juice, or they have these little glucose tablets and measure your blood sugar, because if it's very low, you would need to call your doctor immediately. Um, but you certainly would also want to treat right away with getting carbohydrates on board. So the kinds of symptoms, again, looking for for low blood sugar, dizziness, nausea, sweaty, just feeling like, oh, the world's not right. Mm -hmm. um, low blood pressure is a little less dangerous in the short term, although the symptoms of those, again, can be somewhat similar in terms of feeling sort of really dizzy and lightheaded. Um, like you might also a little bit on the nauseous side. So again, something to just be aware of. If you're on blood pressure, blood pressure lowering meds and you start feeling that way, sit down, take your blood pressure. And if it's low, you know, go ahead and call your doctor because they may need to adjust those doses down. Okay. Good question though. Yeah, because those are, it, it, it can be incredibly effective it, in almost, especially when people do this, like all of a sudden 100% and they just go this way. That's when I really want people to be checking their blood sugar multiple times a day, checking their blood pressure so that they can catch it before it gets to a place where like, uh-oh, you know, I mean, because if your blood sugar goes too low, that can be, that's a, that's a very dangerous situation. Yeah. Um, not that a plant-based diet itself will make your blood sugar too low. It'll get it to a good place. It's if you're also on medications that are pushing yeah. it artificially even lower. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what it does for chronic disease. So heart disease, it's our number one killer. It, you know, Plant-based diets are absolutely optimal for reducing heart disease risk, for lowering cholesterol, um, for lowering blood pressure. They've done a study, and this is, it's for weight as well. They've looked at um, Adventists. So they're an interesting population because they tend to be pretty healthy, but they are, as a, you know, as a church, sort of encouraged to, to remove, minimize or remove animal products from the diet. So there are actually these stair-step relationships between the amount of animal products people eat. So whether they're, they're a meat eater or they're semi-vegetarian or they're vegetarian or they're vegan and their cholesterol levels, stair steps down. Um, the same kind of thing is seen for um, their weight, fun fact. So weight literally in these graphs are just wild to look at because it is like a stair step down. The heaviest people are the ones eating meat. The next, you know, the, Next slimmest are the people who are semi-vegetarian, slimmer than that, vegetarian, slimmest of all. And the only group actually that was in the healthy weight category was vegan. So right. all those things together, and again, weight often tends to go with heart disease risk, but right. blood pressure, cholesterol, all those things, the bad cholesterol, those all drop on a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. And plant-based diets, very low fat, either vegetarian or vegan diets have been shown to actively reverse heart disease, like I mentioned. So that's really great. It's just a lot of fun to work with people and see their numbers come down and watch them get off medications. It's just, 
you know, what could be more rewarding? Um, again, same thing happens for diabetes. So we tell people to eat more carbohydrates mm -hmm. to help their diabetes get better. And they look at me like I've grown a second head because they're like, no, wait, but my blood sugar is high. You see, I'm not supposed to eat carbohydrates. And my answer is no, no, we're actually going to fix your body's ability to, to metabolize or handle carbohydrate appropriately. Like, like if you don't have diabetes, then your body, particularly here, we're talking type two, you know, I, I can go eat two sweet potatoes or three, three in a row. And my body's going to be able to handle that. My blood sugar is going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And so our goal is to get someone who has diabetes to get their blood sugar and their insulin working in a way that they could do the same thing and be fine. Um, and it's not 100% clear how this happens, but one of the reasons that a low fat plant-based diet really appears to help diabetes is that it actually is linked to cleaning out the fat that builds up inside muscle cells. And muscle cells are the main consumers of glucose. So they are the ones that grab, they want to grab glucose out of the blood and take it in because they're going to burn it. Um, but if fat builds up inside those cells, it can actually block those cells from grabbing that glucose using insulin. So insulin is basically the key that opens the door. Um, and if there's a lot of fat inside the muscle cells, like gum in the lock, all of a sudden the insulin can't open the door to let the muscle cell grab that glucose out of the blood. So what a plant-based diet, low fat plant-based diet is helping to do is actually clean out that fat. So that all of a sudden the muscle cells through insulin can start getting the glucose out of the blood again and blood levels of glucose come down. So we're actually, we're actually fixing the underlying problem as opposed to just medicating the symptoms when it comes to diabetes, which is, again, it's just great to watch people sort of struggle with the idea of eating more carbohydrates, but then seeing the results for themselves. It's just, it's so fun. <laughs> it really yeah. is. And even things like that you wouldn't expect, like arthritis, that can oftentimes improve. Yeah. Because this is a very anti-inflammatory way to eat. And of course, weight loss also can help with things like osteoarthritis, but even some of these autoimmune conditions can respond to plant-based diets. So that's great. And then one that's sort of near and dear to me. So it was actually a breast health scare that got me looking into plant-based diets and reading the science and, and just having this sort of total paradigm shift. Um, but it's not a magic bullet, but eating plant-based can, is associated with a lower risk of cancer. So um, they actually was a meta-analysis, so a study of lots of studies, and it looked at over 90 different studies and found there was an 8% lower risk of getting cancer of all types in vegetarians and a 15% lower risk in vegans. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not, clearly it's not going to fix everything, but that's a nice start. And mm -hmm. then again, this was another study done in more than, I believe it was 60,000 Adventists, they, women in that group had a 34% who were vegan in that Adventist group had a 34% lower risk of female cancers combined than women who were eating meat. So that's not bad. That's not bad for just changing up your diet a little bit. Oh, and I should say this also clears up constipation in a jiffy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, that's another and, chronic condition that goes away. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, um, it's interesting because I think a lot of people experience, uh, digestive distress as and it's kind of the you know an initial sign of something's going on but we don't really connect that up to that affecting the rest of our body i think there's a lot of people who have start off with having like constipation and they'll then have bouts of constipation and diarrhea and then they'll have uh you know ibs or acid right. reflux or gallstones and you know, just thinking that, uh, oh, that's just something you're genetically predisposed to, or, you know, you have to treat it with medication. So yeah. how effective is a whole food plant-based diet for all of, like those digestive disorders, like acid reflux and uh, IBS and say like Crohn's disease or uh, the gallstones or kidney stones and that sort of thing? Yeah, a lot of these kinds of symptoms really are sort of the body's cry for help. Um, and we can ignore them or hit them with medication. And again, medication certainly has a place. I'm not opposed to, you know, appropriate use of medications, but getting at the underlying problem through good nutrition, it's, it's key. And as you know, a lot of if things do start in the gut. So making sure that we're putting the right food in makes a big difference. And things like 
diverticulosis and diverticulitis, especially, it's just so clear that when people start eating these whole plant foods, assuming they're not in an acute flare, those problems, they improve. Mm -hmm. So it really, it really does pay. Now that said, when some people switch to a plant-based diet and they're eating more beans and they're getting more fiber than they're used to, they can get some bloating and gas. Yes. So my advice there is if someone is thinking about doing this is to, to ease in. Right. There's no, you don't get a, there's no, you don't get a sticker for doing it 100% all in one day. We here tend to recommend that people take at least a week to transition, to try out recipes and get their bodies used to new foods before they just jump in completely. Because, you know, you are, you're going to be changing those bacteria in your gut. That flora is going to be shifting in a healthy direction, but that means there's going to be a little drama happening in there too. Right. So, better to do yeah. that in a gradual way. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's like if you switch uh, right away, it takes like 30 hours for your whole microbiome to change, which is pretty fa fascinating. It's very quick. It is very quick. It really is very quick. But again, it can also mean that <laughs> people who haven't eaten beans in years and then they eat three servings in a day, you know, they might not be my friend if I tell them just to do it all the way mm -hmm. all at once. So, of course, people are welcome to do that and it's fine, but just if gas is an issue to just go ahead and ease in because it's actually, it actually is a good thing. You do that. Yeah. You're feeding good bacteria when you get that, but you want things to adjust a little bit so that you're not, you know, having. And those are like, yeah. And, and those are like kind of low, what they call low FODMAP, F-O-D-M-A-P foods. So like, um, so the foods that people would want to ease into, you were saying those would be like beans and peas and lentils. Um, what would, so in terms of like uh, what they could eat in like that first week to kind of ease into that, would that be more of like focus on like have potatoes and sweet potatoes and whole grains and then have smaller bits of uh, beans and legumes and have a lot of uh, non-starchy vegetables and some fruits or... Something that's exactly, that. yeah, that's exactly how I would recommend starting would be to sort of shift the kinds of carbohydrates people are eating. Um, there are the sort of transition foods that are plant-based, but they've had some of the fiber stripped out, which actually, again, for people who are just sort of making that shift. Mm -hmm. um, so things like, you know, a, a crumble or a plant-based crumble, that would be certainly preferable to ground beef and sort of halfway on the way. Um, things like tofu tend to be a little gentler and beans are fine, but I wouldn't do more than say half a cup a day just to start. Right. If you're, if you're not used to it. Um, and same with fruit. If you're not used to eating a lot of fruit, I would, I would even ease into that because um, fructose, some people don't absorb as well, particularly if they haven't had much fruit at all. So one of those things to ease in. So yeah, the beans, the cabbage family vegetables also can okay. be a trigger. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the, the sort of sweetest fruits, I would ease into those, but those are all healthy foods mm -hmm. you want to include, but you want to, you know, take those a little slower and the other ones you can make a shift much more rapidly. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's